with our Jupyter Notebook set up and running, let's now take a look at the basic functionality. So now I'm here inside of this new notebook that I just created before, and we see that there's a code cell that's already like marked for us. You can just click in there with my mouse and then start typing some Python code. I do not have it capitalized. And now, as I said before, we get this read, evaluate, print loop thing right in here, which means that we can see our output right inside of this document. So what I can do now here is I can say run this, and I can see my Python output in the same doc document where I just wrote my code. What else can I do? So what I mentioned also before is that everything lives inside of memory, which means that if I define a variable here, let's call it greeting, and then run this code block, then I'm going to be able to access the variable that I just defined in a different code block. So I can say greeting and try autocomplete with tab. Jupyter already knows that this exists, so it autocompletes this for me, and I can run this and get the same output that I would get when entering a variable name and pressing enter inside of a Python interpreter. So this is great. What else can we see here on the site? It tells us in and a number, and this just talks about the code blocks and in which order they were run. So this was the first code block that was run. Afterwards, we ran that one, and then this one. And in case if there's some output, we also get uh, here and out, and from which code block did it come from. Now, if I run this one again, it's going to overwrite the number in here. You can see because it was the fourth code block that was run now. This also means that I'm able to access the variable that I just created down here in a code block further above. So I can go back here, remove that, and pass in greeting instead. I get the same output because I'm using this variable that you defined further down. So I can see that everything lives inside of memory. And I have the advantage of executing single code blocks to see what is the output, but at the same time reusing everything that I create within a document in any code cell available. And this is great for data exploration, where you just want to try out something, look into a table, change something, even just find out what you're supposed to do in the process. And for this, having this incremental way of running code is great. So you can see in here, this environment is already a great place learning about Python programming, getting started. I'm going to remove some cells. For example, I can just play around and try out things. I can say, and the cell get my output. So while I mentioned before that Jupyter is great for data exploration and data analysis, I think it is also actually a great playground for getting started with programming, because it is very intuitive. You have many items that we're going to go over in a moment. And you can just try small pieces of code, see the output right away without needing to write a long script or finding a way around in the Python interpreter or inside of a complicated IDE. Fine, let's take a look at the menu items next. 